Hey guys, it's Julian, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to make hard and rave techno in the style of Kwan Kunstler. In particular, we're going to be talking about his more recent EPs like Armageddon and Hexenmeister with the really hard, aggressive bass sounds, but also with the nice techno, low end, and percussion underneath it. And yeah, as usual, you can get the full project file, samples, MIDI, presets, everything from this video is available at the top of the description, and if you're patient on my Patreon, check there, because it's already available. We're going to be using some techniques that I got from the man himself today, and yeah, let's get started. So, to begin with, we're at 1.36 BPM, so it's a little bit faster than more standard sort of main room techno, and you can still technically play it with those tracks, but it's a little bit faster, so you still get a bit more of like a... You know, more aggressive feel with it, especially like when you're just hearing the drums, like that little bit, even like just going six more BPM up from 130 does make a big difference. As you can hear like the drums just feel a lot more intense at this tempo. Now the first sound we have here is this metallic drone, which sounds like this. So here's the MIDI for this, you can see it's just playing one note, it's playing E, that's the key that we're in. But then what's happening is you can see I've taken all the velocities and I've got like a little bit of a call and response pad pad pattern happening here. Because you can see we have So you're getting like this is one pattern and this is one pattern and then they play together. And it's very subtle, but it's going to make a huge difference versus just making this like one long like like held out notes type of thing like that it's just gonna be a lot better if you have a bit more rhythm to it because like if we have the inch like let's say we're in the intro of the track like we would have like these elements you can really hear that rhythm like here da -da -da -da. So for the sound with this one, this is made with some FM synthesis. So I'll give a little disclaimer and say like, there's a lot of different ways you can make a sound like this. You know, you could use a sample, you could use FM synthesis, you could probably use wavetable synthesis with like some cool metallic sounds. There's just so many different ways to make it. But the way I would recommend going about it is this. Essentially, it's just some sine waves doing FM, you can see, very simple. And then there are different octaves. And then the detune, this fine tuning here in particular, is what's really going to create the metallic texture. Cause, so I'll turn this like back to zero. So here's what it just sounds like. You can hear it sounds metallic a little bit like texturally, but it doesn't really have that kind of like dissonance to it. Like there's no like conflict here. It's just a perfect note that just you hear E and that's all it is. So these detunes are really good. Because obviously, like, a metallic sound, like, if we're trying to think of, like, what this would sound like if it was really a piece of metal that we were recording, it would be, you know, it wouldn't be perfect. You would have different overtones and different resonant things happening within that piece of metal that would create a sound that wouldn't just be, like, oh, you know, it would have kind of some clashing in there. And so, the D-Tune is the perfect way to recreate that. And, you know, it also just makes it sound a bit more evil. And kind of like aggressive but yeah so i really recommend trying that like again like if you're trying to make a sound like this like let's say you're hearing a track and you say i want to make this type of like metallic sound like i want you to hear the sound and be able to think this is metallic you have to start thinking as if you're working with a piece of metal like what would a piece of metal have essentially and that's kind of the way we're thinking about it and then that's all going into a low pass filter and you can see the low pass has an envelope on it, and I also have the hard shaper. So here's without this filter. And with it. So you can hear this is a big part of like not just making the sound a bit pluckier and a bit more percussive, but also just making it like bigger and fatter and a bit more metallic too with the hard shaper. And yeah, and then the last thing here inside of the synth is just you'll notice I took the velocity and mapped it to the volume. I just turned it all the way up. And that's how you get the rhythm, because then those quieter velocities are quieter, louder velocities are louder. Then we just have a bit of chorus, which you can see, this is at a slow rate, but I've got the feedback up pretty high, so here's without it. So 
So you know, it's another thing that really helps with that sort of metallic texture that you want. And then we just have some echo and reverb, giving the sound some space. I have a bit of drum bust, because even though this is like a... Just like a drone sound, you know, you want it to be really fat and punchy, because usually, like, you would have a part of the track, like, you know, it's not just always going to be playing underneath this, like, lead sound, like, you'd probably have a part of the track that's just... So you want to make sure that this is a sound that can stand on its own, you know, it's not meant to just, like, be this quiet little thing, we need it to be as full as any other sound in the mix. And then the last thing that we have on here is just a compressor side chaining this to the kick. I'm side chaining it to just that kick, not the full rumble kick. But yeah, that is it for that metallic drone. Then we have this rumble boy, aka the rumble kick. So the way this is being made is we have our main kick. And then I'm using this technique here called ghost kicks, where essentially you just have a kick. I'm using that to create the rumble, which I'll explain in a second. So, for the main kick, it's two layers. You can see, I've actually just layered them together here using a bit of EQ3, because you can see we have this kick. And then I have this one, like, right on top. Just to add a bit more punch and a bit more fatness to the sound. And yeah, it really makes a big difference in terms of just getting this to, like, really punch through the mix. And here when I turn that second kick on, you just get a lot more of like, kind of that thing in the kick. And yeah, that's all those are. There's a bunch of processing on the group, but I've just got those playing side by side in this instrument rack for the main kick, and then for the ghost kick. So this is made just using that main kick that you saw. So we have like that. And then I just low passed it. And then it's playing straight 16th notes. And the last thing to really make this work is that we have it being side-chained to the kick with this compressor here. So yeah, it's important to side-chain it. If you don't do that, it's going to get kind of messy because you're going to just have like a da -da 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 underneath your kick. Versus this way, if we side-chain, they each have their own equal space. And then on the group here, so we have two things. We have saturation and then we have some limiting. So... Here is without anything. And then just the saturator. And then with the limiter. So you can see most of the work's being done here with the saturator. As you guys have seen before, you know, whenever you put like two sounds like this into some saturation, it's gonna glue them together. And this works really well because you really want this to be kind of one element. Like even though it is two elements, you know, it's the bass line and it's the kick. When somebody hears this track, you want them to feel like it's just kind of one thing. And so the saturator does a really, really good job of just gluing those together and filling in the spaces harmonically in between these two sounds. And you can see I also have the bass frequency turned down a little bit. That helps get rid of the crunchiness. And this limiter here, this is a technique I've been using recently. Where basically, this is a lot of times used like when you're using like a, re a reverb or a delay to create a rumble. But you can, you can also use it with this kind of rumble. The idea is that you're basically just kind of like pushing the kick and the rumble closer together with this. Because a limiter is going to, it's like a little bit of compression where it's just going to kind of like push the sounds closer together. So I'm not doing that much even. You can see it's just like 4.3 dB. But here's without it. And then with it. It's just the perfect way to like really even out the kick and the rumble. And just get that fullness. And you can hear like it's not flattening the kick out. Like we still have plenty of punch in the kick. You know the kick is still sitting right on top of the mix. So it's just a little bit like that to kind of glue it together. Then we have this quote unquote rave percussion which sounds like this. So these are actually three different loops. These are three of my loops. I'll play them for you where they're from. They're from this definitive hard rave techno drums. There we are. This definitive hard rave techno drums, drum loops, volume one sample pack that I dropped. And what these are 
like I said, these are just those kind of like classic ravey style loops like you've heard in a ton of different tracks from Conquistor as well as just like literally almost everybody's using these types of sounds right now. So the idea here is you kind of get a few of them because with these, it's about like the texture. You know, like this, in theory, we could program like a hi-hat and a kick and a shaker and try to kind of recreate this. But there's just a certain texture that you're getting from this that you just can't get any other way. And so we're taking those and just putting them together to kind of complement each other. So like this one is from this loop 5 here. And then these two are from loop 4. So yeah, the link to this is in the top of the description. It's a really good sample pack if you want to make this style of techno. But the idea is like you want to put a few of these together that complement each other. So this one is just like a straight quarter note thing. This one kind of gives us some You know, it's kind of playing up the eighth notes a bit. And then these hi-hats just add that last kind of energy to this. And so this is how you create one of these loops. Like, you often hear these at the beginning of tracks. Like, you know, you would hear, like... This would be, like, the first 30 seconds of the track would just be these. And then the other stuff starts to come in. So, yeah, it's just all about getting a few of them together that are going to complement each other and then just putting them in the track and processing them correctly as well. Because you can see, I just have a bit of drum bust on these. You want to make sure you do something, though. Even though these do have a lot of texture to them already, it's not really going to sound as big and as professional as it could unless you just add that extra little push to kind of glue them together and get them to, like... Yeah, just really work together as kind of one loop here. Then we have the lead bass, which sounds like this. So here's the MIDI. It's actually just two bars, and it's pretty simple if you look at it. You can see we're just using E, and then F, and then there's just this D down here, which is just the minor seventh of E, because you can see, yeah, it's just two notes down from E, and then this A as well, which would be the fifth of E. Or excuse me, the fourth of E. And yeah, from a musical standpoint, this actually might technically be, like, in A minor. Because essentially you're getting, like, like, if we looked at this on the scale, it would be like, alright, so A would be the root note. And then these notes make sense together if you're kind of treating this as A minor. Because then you would have E, your fifth, F, your minor sixth. That D would be your fourth. So, like, you could kind of look at this as the key of E. You could also, if you really want it to be official, look at it as the key of A minor. But, yeah, it's just about creating this kind of, like, intense repeated 16th note pattern. And, yeah, and then for the sound. So, the sound is very important with this. You'll notice it's actually pretty simple. It's a very fat bass synth. But it's all about just creating like a nice fat sound already out of the synth. And then just doing little things to kind of accentuate that. And kind of letting it breathe. You know, I think when you're trying to make a sound like this, it can be easy to end up with like 10 different distortions. You know, a bunch of different like multi-band compression and like compressing all over the sound and all this kind of stuff. You really don't want to take that approach with this style of stuff. Like this style of techno is just all about simple, nice, fat saw waves and square waves coming through. And just sounding really good because of that, without needing, like, you know, a bunch of different distortions and, like, doing all kinds of crazy filtering and stuff like that. So, for the sound, it's two layers. It's this one. And this one. So you can hear, like, that big unison sound. It's kind of, like, the wide thing that you hear. But then we still have the one down the center to kind of keep it grounded. So... Yeah, for the first one, it is just two saw waves here. And then I just have a ton of unison on them. That's really all that is. And then the second one... is actually kind of the same sound, but without any unison. 
So we're just creating like this one is sort of like the basis of the sound. And then the unison one just gives it that last little like kind of fullness that it needs to like really round it out. You know, if you have either one of these on their own, it's not really going to quite be as big. But then you put them together and it becomes a monster. And then on both of those at the same time, so like I said, it's a very simple processing. I just have a bit of drum bus, which is, yeah, fattening them up, gluing them together. Here's without it. You can hear something like this is going to be important. Again, like I said, like you're not going to use so much distortion, but you do want some kind of saturation like this to just really fill that in like you heard when we turned that on. And then this compressor is just side chaining it to the main kick. And then the last thing here is just an EQ. And so the EQing here is a bit delicate in the low end. You know, you want to make sure you don't mess up the low end. So we're just cutting that out for the most part. But still leaving in all this fat mid range. And then I'm just boosting the mids and highs a little. Oh yeah, that's it for that lead bass. This is really a, a case of like, just don't overthink it. And you can make a really good sound. Then we have the clap. So usually in this style, you know, you're going to have this big, hard-hitting clap. Like, just, you know, it's not like a little, it's a big. <laughs> that, like, really makes you bob your head on every two and four. And if we take it away, you can hear, like, it's kind of missing that, like. The way you do this is you take a clap like this. You know, it needs to already be a pretty big clap. Again, you don't want to just use a little, like, you really need, like, a... And then you can see I just have it going through, like, a short reverb here to give it a bit of space. A bit of overdrive, which is what's giving it the distorted... thing. There's about that. And with it, and that also distorts the reverb a little bit, which makes it more aggressive and textured sounding. And then we just have some drum bus just to give it that last push. That really helps with the punch. And then we just have these last little three percussion layers down here, which sound like this. So these are just sort of like the extra percussions. Like we have these little rolls, which you can hear those really play off of the rave percussion. You know, they just have that like. So you constantly have those 16th notes playing, and the track feels really aggressive. And then this hi-hat, you know, just a nice fat 909 hi-hat, standard techno sound. And then just letting it, you know, sit right on top of the mix there. And then finally the ride, which is also a 909 sound. This is a 909 ride, another very popular techno sound. And then I'm using this echo here on the ping pong setting to create like this wide kind of sound because you know typically if your ride is just down the center it'll get lost but this way you can hear the ride is sort of like here and then everything else is right here so it's kind of putting it in a different place and then I just have some saturation to fatten that up and make it kind of stand out a bit more in the mix And yeah, so that is going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the full project files, samples, MIDI, presets, everything like that from this video is available at the top of the description on my Bandcamp. It's a really great way to support me if you guys are enjoying these videos. Every little bit really helps. And yeah, thank you so much, guys. And I will see you tomorrow with another video.